Greetings! I'm Nismo Spoolin, and this is your follow-up video for how to improve with mouse and keyboard on PC, volume 2. Hopefully you guys got something out of my first video. If you didn't, go back and watch it. For this video, I'm going to talk to you about switching over from controller to mouse and keyboard. I'm going to talk to you about seated position, chair, desk space, monitor placement, keyboard and mouse placement, and everything in between. So buckle up, get ready, and we're gonna have ourselves a video. Going from controller to mouse and keyboard, you'll notice that with mouse and keyboard, there's a lot more arm movement. So with a controller, you can sit basically any way that you want with your arms in any place that you desire, right? And you can still operate your console and hit all of your buttons no matter what you're doing. It doesn't require any arm movement, it doesn't require any torso movement, it doesn't require any movement whatsoever. You can literally sit here like this the entire time, just moving your fingers and thumbs for the entire time. But when you transition to a mouse and keyboard, it's a much different story. You're using your torso, you're using your arms, you're able to sit closer to the monitor so that you can see and, and get a good focus on everything that's in front of you. That's the main challenge from moving from a controller to mouse and keyboard, is that you, you have to not only get used to a new set of peripherals, you also need to get used to moving and being more of a part of the game, being more immersed into whatever you're doing. Your arm movements don't have anything to do with playing on a controller, but when you're playing on a PC, the amount of force, movement, speed, uh, dexterity means a whole lot more. And the dexterity is not only in your thumbs, it has to be in your fingers, your wrist, your hand, your arm, your shoulder, and even your torso. Because if you're moving your torso around while you're playing, it's going to adjust how your arm functions while you're trying to aim. And that's, that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you want to be able to move more than others, right? You want to be able to move more in some situations than in others. If you're sniping, maybe you don't want to move as quite as much. You want to be able to just kind of get to where you're going, get your flick shot, get to where you're trying to get to, hit the button, click the head, and get him out of there. But when you're rifling, Maybe you're rifling in a BR game where you need to flip around and move around a lot, where movement is very key in a BR game, you're gonna wanna move your arm, maybe your shoulder a lot more. And that being said, we can also move into seated position. Oh yeah? But can you do this? So since you're watching this video, it's safe to assume that you haven't yet gotten yourself a seated position or anything like that. You're just getting started. And it's important that where if you already have a comfortable seated position and somewhere where you're happy to be playing, you don't want to keep messing with that too much. If you're finding success in the way that you're sitting or the way that, you're, that your posture is set up, then you don't want to mess with it too much. But if you're trying to get somewhere, if you're trying to do something different or you're trying to do something new, it's important to keep changing until you figure out exactly where you're comfortable. When I'm actually playing a game, I like to sit as close to the system as possible with my backrest bolt upright, if possible, if you have a chair like this, with my arms on the desk and with plenty of movement. When my arm isn't hitting the chair and my mouse isn't hitting anything on my desk. And that necessarily won't be perfect for everybody. It's just perfect for me. And so, in some cases, a lot of people don't have all of this room to work with like I do, or they don't have this kind of chair that I have. But seated position is very, very crucial to you playing at your best and not causing you any like unnecessary binding or drag on any of the parts that you need to move in order to play competitively. I recommend sitting close up to the desk with your backrest bolt upright and plenty of room for your arms and hands. An actual gaming chair isn't necessary. 
for anybody that's going to be playing competitive first person shooter games it's not necessary for anybody switching over to keyboard and mouse just a regular computer chair or office chair or whatever you have up to your pc will work perfectly fine but that being said this chair does offer benefits that a regular chair does not and it's it's a common running joke around with um with most pc gamers that if they're playing better than you it's because they have a better gaming chair <laughs> But if you think about it, the amount of adjustability that this chair has to adjust my seated position and get me where my arms are free and doing what I need them to do is actually giving me more of an edge on my competition than somebody that's sitting here in a lawn chair per se. So with this, I can adjust the backrests up and down. I can adjust the armrests up and down, forward and back, left and right. And that way, if I wasn't to sit as close to my desk, but I wanted somewhere for my arms to rest, I could do that. And I did play like this for a while, if I didn't want to sit so close to the desk. But I like sitting so close to the desk, so I put them all the way down and run them underneath the desk itself. And that's another thing that I wanted to touch on. The, um, the amount of room that I have here, I find necessary for me to play at my best. I have this massive, uh, glorious PC gaming race wow. mouse pad and all of my desk space completely open. I have my monitors on a VESA stand, except for this one. This one doesn't Ooh. count. So that they're out of the way and they're way back there and they don't mix up where my, where my mouse is going to go or they don't, nothing gets in the way so I don't run my mouse into it or whatever when I'm playing on a low sensitivity. That is the reason why I don't use the factory keyboard tray that most desks come with. Most desks come with a keyboard tray that slides out. And so you can sit there and you can do your office work with the keyboard tray. But the keyboard tray is abysmally small. There's not a lot of room for you to move around your mouse hand. So what I did was I completely disconnected the keyboard and mouse tray, did away with it, and I put everything on top of the desk here. Now, this is where my desk selection comes into play. I went with a glass top desk because it is smooth, uniformly smooth all the way across. There's no bumps, there's no sections where it's cut up. So everywhere, so literally everywhere that my mouse goes or that my mouse travels on this mouse pad is 100% smooth. There is, and there is downfalls to having a regular, cheap, um, particle board desk. Particle board can swell if you spill something on it. It can get bumps and lumps. It can warp over time. It can sag with age. And these things can all change how your mouse sensor picks up on the desk. But with glass and metal, there is no sag. There is no bulging. There is no swelling. There's nothing that can, that, that can deform the way that this, the glass top sits here. So I always have a good true plane for my mouse to, to glide around on. As you can see here, I keep my keyboard far up into the top left and my mouse here in the middle. Fusion is here. My GoPro overheated, so I switched over to this camera to finish off this part of the video and it's a day later so anyway that being said some people like to have their keyboard this way towards their their chest and they wrap their fingers around here so that they can reach certain keys easier than others or so that they can have more room for their mouse if they were to play at LAN most of the desks provided at LAN uh, are only going to come with a certain amount of uh, space for you to move your mouse. And they're not going to have you show up to their LAN with a huge mouse mat like this for you to roll out onto their desk and, and use. So they're, you know, you're going to want to have a specific LAN mouse mat and all this other stuff. When you're playing at LAN with a keyboard, even... I mean, this being a 60% keyboard actually benefits me here, but if you were to have like a regular sized, you know, full size keyboard, at LAN on these smaller desks with less space, 
you're more likely to run your mouse into your keyboard while you're trying to play. So a lot of professional players will turn it completely sideways to give themselves more room to move their mouse. I've never liked that. There's a lot of pro players that don't like that, but as far as I go, that's the way that it, this is the way that I like to do it. Keyboard all the way up to the top left, mouse over at the right. So I'm gonna also throw in some gameplay here so you can see um, what I do with my mouse hand while I'm actually playing the game. I don't know if this is necessarily the best footage of me playing, but I was kind of in a time crunch, so I just played a quick game, and this is what we've uh, this is what we've come up with without any warm up or not playing this game for three or four days. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. So once you've found a nice place for your keyboard and mouse to be on your desk, where you're not running your mouse into everything that's um, on top of your desk, you might want to look into how you can create yourself some more room in getting yourself like vase amounts and stuff like that for your monitors. The monitor stands take up a heck of a lot of room and it's something that I noticed that especially while having more than one monitor, it just gives you more objects for you to crash into. So with the with the vase amounts, not only do I get rid of the stand that's sitting on top of my desk, I can also move my monitor closer to me or further away or left and right without actually having the stand itself have to go with it. Like the monitor can almost move completely independently from where it's uh, affixed to the desk, which is really nice for playing at home and, and getting your practice in and and not crashing into everything. At LAN, they're not gonna give you vase amounts, they're gonna give you an actual regular monitor that has a stand on it, which is perfectly fine. Um, you're gonna have to learn how to play around that if you want to be a professional player or if you wanna be a competitive LAN player or anything along those lines. But th that'll be something for another video where we talk about actually playing at LAN and the difference between playing at home and playing at LAN. For this video, we're just going to go over your home setup and where you're gonna practice or do online tournaments and stuff like that. With your monitors out of the way, with your mouse and keyboard where you want them to be, with your mouse mat set up, we can go back into um, the seat, the, at least the seat that I'm using. Now the AK Racing seats, um, at least the model that I'm using right now, the um, Premier, I think it's called. They they aren't exactly the most comfortable chair in the world, and they're actually designed to be that way. The bottom cushion is really hard, so that you don't sink into it. So you're at a constant level. So where you set your chair height, the uh, the cushion doesn't change that for you. When you sit on a harder cushion, it's less likely to deform and sag over time. So you can keep the level that you're sitting at for much longer. The, the chair also forces you to sit in a more attentive position. Whereas if you're sitting in a, in a nice, big, padded, comfy, cozy chair, you're more likely to slump or slump forwards or back in the chair because you're more comfortable. So this, this kind of chair with this kind of cushion uh, forces you to sit upright more. Um, it's built with a lot more sturdy materials inside of it so that it can't, the position can't change while you're playing. Another thing that you may have noticed is that I do not run the head cushion or the lumbar cushion on my chair. And this is because when I run the lumbar cushion, it pushes me too far forward in the seat and I have to arch my back more to push my back up against the back of the chair and I like to be able to feel my back up against the very back of the chair and the head pillow causes me to push my head too far forwards. I like to be able to not be pushed as far away from the back of the chair as possible. That way, I can kind of pin myself up against the desk here, and I can feel everything straight. And like I said before, it's not all about having a fancy chair. It's not all about having a fancy desk. The important parts, especially for this video in particular, is to have a nice, good mouse pad that you feel really comfortable with. If you like for your mouse to move very quickly across the surface to get one that's very slick. If you like one to have a little bit of a tactile feedback to have one that's a little bit with more texture. It's good to have a keyboard that is the right size for you. A keyboard that um, 
has all the buttons that you want to use and at the same time isn't intruding in your mouse space. It's good to have the right monitors for the job. I like to use 144 hertz monitors and the reason I don't use 240 hertz monitors is purely because of how expensive they are. And I've, I've really found a, a nice, comfortable spot with the um, MSI Optics MPG 27 CQ. I really like this monitor and I like, uh, I like the way it feels when I play. Uh, it's important to get a mouse that feels good in your hand and, and fits really well to the size of your hand. Those things are the things that you want to focus on the most. And getting a, a fancy chair should be on the very far end of your uh, to-do list when you're picking up things for your setup. And as you fine tune how you sit and how you play and you start to like add things here and there and take things away, you'll start to think about whether getting a chair is right for you. Some people can function perfectly well with whatever chair that they have. Some people need that little extra bit of support. Some people need that little extra bit of armrest. They need it to be able to come up a little bit higher so they can rest their arm on it properly, or they need it to go lower so they can get their chair under the desk or what have you. But some people don't. Use what you have for now. Make sure you get the important parts figured out and get all the parts that are necessary out of the way. And then as you start to put the pieces together, then figure out the more expensive and less necessary stuff to get yourself into being better at mouse and keyboard. Just being better at mouse and keyboard doesn't require you to have all of the uh, fancy bells and whistles and knickknacks and doodads. You want to make sure that you have a good system. You want to make sure that you have a nice place for your mouse and keyboard to be. And you want to make sure that you have something to sit on that you can sit in a nice comfortable position and that's really it try and uh, exercise different sitting positions try and put yourself further back or closer to the desk try to sit with your arms on the armrests or with your arms not on the armrest try different things make sure that you're leaving no stone unturned and take all of those different things and see which ones are the most comfortable for you and then just implement the one that is the most comfortable i really do hope you got some good useful information out of this video if you did say down in the comments down below things that you tried and things that were successful let's have a conversation about it don't forget to like the video subscribe if you haven't already with notifications turned on so you know when i do another one of these videos and as always ta-ta for now dudes